Dear President Trump, dear, dear, dear President Trump, good morning. I know that today is a rainy day in Georgia, but there are sunny days ahead as we progress toward the election that we hope will bring America back to reality, the reality that God is still on the throne, there is still hope for America, and there is still the promise that if we do what is right, we will be rewarded. And I want to ask you to do something for me. Um, I've thought of emailing you. I've thought of writing you. I've thought of overnighting you a package. And I just thought, maybe I just need to write you a letter. So here's my letter to my president, Donald John Trump. You see this? I got this at the first Trump rally that I attended way back when, when you first ran. And we were in North Carolina in a very hot building with no air conditioning. We waited a long time to get to see you and it was absolutely amazing. And the thing that I took from that first rally was that I, a widow at 50, um, self-employed 99% of my life, was standing there with executives, farmers, ditch diggers, you name it, we were there. Every nationality, every creed, color, and everything. Everybody was together. We were together. And I want you to continue to unite us, bring us together. And I'm going to ask a favor of you. One of my viewers the other day said, I can't believe you don't support a woman for president or a woman for vice president. Well, sir, I don't. I'm so thankful that you chose J.D. Vance as your running mate. I prayed, so prayers are answered. I prayed, God, please bring somebody with a military background. My president has a business background, so I'm happy with that. But I need somebody with a military background. I can't tell you how much how the excitement that came about when you chose a Marine. Thank you very, very much. This is a little bit tattered and torn because you can see it's been used. It's been used every time we gather. The old widow women get together and we talk about the difference you made in our lives. We talk about the cost of our groceries. We talk about the, the fact that we could buy gas and go on some outings, do some vacations. We could do things that we had not been afforded to do during the eight years of Obama and Biden when they first reigned terror over our world and changed everything. As a realtor, I saw that there were no homes to sell, there were nobody to buy, nobody could do anything during their second reign of terror. It was horrible. And so I reach out to you today, even though I don't want a woman for vice president or president, I want you to do something for me. I want you to, when you do rallies, when you do events, when you do commercials, don't talk about her as a woman because you're going to make half of the world mad. Don't talk about her and the things that she's done wrong as a woman. Talk about the things that she did wrong as a vice president, the things that she did wrong when she did not guard our border, the things that she did wrong when she did not help with our economy. Talk about the things, not about the woman, because then you're going to tick off half the women in the world. Now, I'm out here trying to get you votes. Don't cost us any votes, because women get a little touchy. That's exactly why I didn't want a woman for president or vice president. We get a little touchy. We support you. We love you. We are so honored to be out here representing you and telling people, vote for our president, Donald John Trump. I thought I would try to reach out to Laura Trump because I thought she could get a hold of you and I was going to tell her all these things. But I couldn't find a way to reach her. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to do it this way. This is the best way I know. So President Trump, we support you. We love you. We want you to be elected because we want our world to be back to the good world that it was. Now, let's calm down anything that is negative about her as a woman. I don't say her name because, honestly, I can't stand her. So if I can hold it back, you can too. Let's talk about the things that have happened during their administration, the things that were destroyed during their administration. As a mom who buried two children, as a widow who had to take it on my own for over 23 years now, I've done it all on my own and I survived, but I had failure during those years when Biden and Obama were in there. 
I had to start over again. Please, please do whatever you can to unite America, unite the women, the men, the blacks, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, you name it. If they are here legally and they can vote. Now there's the other thing, sir. Please, please stop the cheating. Stop people from being allowed to vote who can't vote because they're not U.S. citizens. And please, sir, continue to pray for all the families who have been affected by the illegals who have come into our country and raped, robbed, murdered innocent victims. Today, I ask you as my president to please unite us, gather us together, and let us see once again how great America can be. You did it once and we know you can do it again. We love you, President Trump, and I can't wait to vote for you the day the polls open. Have a great, great day. And everybody, let's get together and let's join and support President Donald John Trump and our great Vice President J.D. Vance. Have a great day, everybody. Well, here we go. I told you, you can't trust these women. I forgot the most important thing. What in the world was I thinking? I've done live television for 18 years and I don't use a teleprompter and I don't use a script. I try to put everything in my head and I try to bring it out when it's supposed to. Well, you know what I forgot? July the 13th. Do you know what happened on July the 13th? My president almost lost his life. And as we look at what's happening with the investigations, with the Secret Service, with the FBI, with the local um, police officers, now that all of the videos are coming out and we are seeing just how long people knew that there was a shooter on the roof, I don't think it was conspiracy. I think it was negligence. And that's just my opinion. And I'll tell you the thing about women in America today, if they have common sense, they put two and two together and they always come up with four. So put your common sense together, ladies. We had an assassination attempt that almost took our candidate out. We had an assassination attempt that would have changed the Trump family forever. Melania would have lost her husband and Barron and the other kids would have lost their dad. When we think about what almost happened in America, it is time for a change. And thank God the woman from the Secret Service has stepped down. She should have been fired the next day. But we need to get together and we need to put our heads, what can we do to make America great again? We can't just let President Trump do it on his own. So if you see things in your community that need to be done, reach out and get them done. Be a doer, not a sayer. Get out and make it, um, make it the best place that America could possibly be. And President Trump, we will support you and we do thank God every single day that you made it on July the 13th, probably the worst day that I can imagine for your family and for many other families and to the gentleman who was killed, um, praying for his family every day and for the two other gentlemen that are recovering. We can't say enough about what it meant for them to support you, to be there, and sadly for it to be the end of one of them's life. So we again will pray for them and we hope, we hope nothing but great things as you continue to do rallies Please don't stop doing rallies, but let's get a little more security for you. We love you, we support you, and can't wait to vote for you.